Hi there. Today we're doing a job and we're restoring the chrome on a vintage BMX. This BMX is made by a company called Harrow that were founded in California in the late 1970s. They're a specialist in making freestyle BMX bikes. This one belongs to a guy called Ian Peggs who asked me to mention him in the video and it's being restored by a company called Ezo Cycles. I'll put a link down in the description so you can get their details. As you can see this is in quite a poor condition. Mr Peggs has owned it ever since it was brand new but unfortunately it was stored in some poor damp conditions for quite a few years and this is where the corrosion has started to bite into it. No worries we can restore it so we're going to crack on and make it beautiful again. Before we start restoring the chrome, we've got to book the job in and write out a list of all the parts. After it's been photographed, we print the photograph off and that goes around the workshop with the job. The first thing that we're going to have to do is to get this stripped back to the bare metal and all the rust off it so that we can polish it. What we're doing here is we're wiring it up on copper wires so that we can pass an electric current through it. As you'll see as we're going through the video, all stages of this process are very labour intensive and require a lot of man hours of work. Now these are wired up on copper wires, we can pass an electric current through them, but we reverse the polarity so it's the opposite way round to when we're plating. So in effect, we're plating the old metal off. As you can see, all of the original plating has been removed but it hasn't removed the rust to remove the rust we put it in a tank of hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid as the Americans like to call it into the acid it goes and after a while, it will have dissolved the rust off, leaving us with nice, clean metal. Once it's been rinsed off, we can dip it in a soapy cleaner and what this does is it stops it from rusting while it dries off. Now it's ready for polishing. Now we're in the polishing shop this is where the majority of the man hours of work are going to be carried out. The first operation is what we call cutting out. What you've got to achieve is to remove all of the corrosion marks from the metal so that you're left with a smooth surface. All the other processes after that, we're actually removing the marks that we've just put in. Now this is probably about a 180 belt 
and we're going to use this belt and get to as many of the areas as we can before we have to switch to other types of tools. It's very, very important that we keep this polished evenly. You can't concentrate in one area, you've got to do it evenly. It's a good idea not to set fire to your glove while you're doing it, but these things do happen. Once this frame is done, we've got to work our way through all the other parts as well. We've done as much as we can on these abrasive belts at the moment. So we're going to have to get some tools so that we can get to these interior bits that we can't get to with an abrasive belt. Here's an array of tools. We've got various mops and also that's a felt bob there. It's actually made of felt. So it's been dressed up with an abrasive and he's now going to work the interior areas that he can't get to with an abrasive belt. These are a lot, lot slower than the abrasive belts.
The other downside with them is the abrasive doesn't last very long so you have to keep dressing it up. You can see it steaming away there where it's been dressed up. It's not actually very hot, it's just slightly warm because the tool's got warm from being in use and it's actually winter when this is being filmed so it's not very hot in the workshop. If you enjoy our videos please like and subscribe to our channel as it really helps our videos get noticed. These felt tools are reasonably hard but they do have a little bit of flex in them but we'll be using some other tools later on that have far more flex where they'll go into the corners better. dressing up again because it's worn out in short order here's a shaped felt that's quite sharp in its profile that's going to help get into the corners This is why you need quite a few of these type of tools because you keep having to dress them up and waiting for them to dry while you use the next one. This is a slightly bigger sateen tool that he's using at the moment and this is actually on a stitch mop so that's a hard cotton mop that's been dressed up with an abrasive. Those are all finished now. Ready for the next stage. Now this is back to an abrasive belt but this is a process we call glazing and you use a very fine belt and some grease so that it reduces the cut and this will actually shine the metal up quite a bit you can see it's getting shinier and shinier as we go
This glazing process is really just to help make the final process go easier. The final process is what we call brushing, where you use a sizal mop to brush it up with a polishing compound. But the more you can do at this stage, the quicker the brushing process will be. So he's just going to get to as many areas as he can just to speed up the next process. There's a brush going on and this is a little tiny brush to try and get into those little areas. Here's a bigger brush going on, this way you can get to the main areas and brush those up to a mirror finish in a much quicker time. That's the polishing compound that's being used just to polish it up. Unlike the previous polishing processes, on this one you actually use your body weight and push it against the brush. As you can see, he's holding it really close to his body and leaning into it. The other thing you can see is how the shine is building and it's getting brighter and brighter. You can really see how shiny that metal has become now. It should be a mirror finish. There we go, polishing complete and ready for electroplating. Now we're in the plating shop and we've got to wire all of these parts up onto copper wires so that we can pass an electric current through them. There he's tying a weight onto the bottom of that part to stop it dancing around in the tank because if it moves along the bar and touches another piece of work, both of them will be ruined. Wiring up items for electroplating is far more skilled than people would realise. You've got to do it so you don't leave wire marks or you reduce them as much as possible they've got to be the right orientation or else they won't plate properly there's all sorts of factors that you've got to take into consideration and think about in just preparing them to put in the tank here we're going into a soapy cleaner and they're just going to soak in there for a while because the most important thing in preparing things for plating is cleanliness so the gloves go on 
and then it's just a methodical clean of all of the parts making sure that all the nooks and crannies are got into and make sure that there's no grease dirt polishing compounds or anything else on there because if there is it will ruin the job here they are going into an electric cleaner we pass a current through it and what this does it fizzes and blasts any oxides off the surface that have formed since the item was polished because even the slightest bit of an oxide layer will prevent the plating from bonding properly to the surface of the metal after cleaning they've got to go through this rinse system where they're going through progressively cleaner water all we're doing is removing the cleaning solutions because if we don't then the final product will be stained this last tank here is a dilute sulfuric acid and it just makes sure that all of the cleaning solution is removed back into the clean water and then we're going to go into the tank this is the nickel tank and it's where all the good looks and all the weather protection comes from so here's the main frame it's going to go through the same process as all the other stuff and the handlebars as well an electric clean and then it's through the rinse system as before The big problem with this frame is how slowly it drains. We've got to wait until all of the solutions have come out before we can move on. There you can see the same thing again on every tank. It takes ages to get this around the plant. If you enjoy our videos, please give us a like subscribe to our channel and if you hit the notification bell you'll be informed when we upload new videos and there we go into the nickel tank they're probably going to be cooking away for an hour or so to get a nice deposit on them it's important to put the nickel on slowly because that way you get a ductile weather resistant finish and it's the nickel layer that gives it the weather protection so it's most important that you get this bit right time to adjust the power and then we'll leave it bubbling away until it's got a nice coating Now we're coming out of the nickel tank and you can see already that it looks almost finished. All of the shine is there, the only difference is this is a slightly more yellowy colour than chrome and also it tarnishes so if you didn't put a chrome layer on top of it you would have a slightly different colour and you'd have to polish it every week to make sure that it looks nice. some power on the chrome and there it is fizzing away after a few minutes it's out of the chrome and we've just got to rinse that chrome solution off and then this tank neutralizes the chromic acid and once that's done a rinse in some fresh water and it's finished we've done that with a frame but we've got to get all the other parts done now
Now all those parts are finished, time to rinse those off. There they are, hanging up just so the water can dry off and they can be inspected. Now we've finished the plating, we're going to need to inspect these and make sure that there's no defects. When they dry off they always get watermarks on them, so what we're doing is giving them a coat of polish and then when that's dried off we're going to wipe that off and we will finally see the results. So here you can see it being wiped off. Now you can see that one there is a bit grey. What's happened there is that's got a bit too much power in the chromine and it goes grey. It normally happens on the extremities. If you have a look on this frame, right on the tips, you will see that it's got a bit of a grey deposit. Now what we're going to have to do before we can give that to the customer is we've got to remove that by polishing off the excess chrome until it's nice and bright. Some chrome burns are inevitable because chrome doesn't want to plate very well and requires a lot of power to get it to plate. So it's always a balancing act, not enough and it won't plate at all. Back in the polishing shop and we're going to use a soft stitch mop and some very very fine polishing compound and we're going to remove those grey deposits, they will polish off. It's always the sharp edges and the extremities that get the most chrome plating so that's why we need to go over those tips and remove it so they're just right. Although the crank got burnt all over, it just got too much power. And here's the finished article ready for the customer. I'm sure he's going to be very happy. All of his parts are shining like jewels. Just to remind you what it looked like when it came in. And the same parts as they are now. Remember, if you need any chrome restoring, give us a call. All the contact details are in the description below and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.